Shalom. I want to first and foremost start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Arachak, Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the four elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. And uh, man, oh man, say it ain't so. So you have yet another incident where another Sakari camp gets confounded by a Christian. And of course, because of what their leaders teach is why they don't have any good ground when it comes to this particular topic. When you constantly teach that Apostle Paul, his words are not authoritative. You know, when you get to just pick and choose what you want from out of his teachings, but then you want to trash other aspects of his teachings, this is what happens. And uh, this is why you have to humble yourself. All right, you, ha you have to humble yourself. You have to be um, taught again. Or you could just continue to uh, wrestle, you know, with, with his epistles like you do the other scriptures unto your own destruction, which Apostle Peter uh, forewarned what happened to, to, to certain individuals, especially if they don't have the spirit. So there's another incident, all right? And um, see, the thing with them is they act as if the the, the writings of Paul, the, the Christian church have some type of monopoly on his word. The Christians, you, we can't act like, you know, they can just hijack his teachings and just because they misinterpret and uh, don't really understand the message behind uh, his epistles and what he was actually teaching, that doesn't mean that his teachings are invalid. It doesn't mean that they're not authoritative. Just because the Christian church butchers and misinterprets his writings that doesn't mean that they have a monopoly on his teachings you have to really understand for yourself and you and, and that would take the spirit so once again you got a case of young guys going out there all right puffed up with with, with, with pride lift, um, lifted up with pride falling into the condemnation of the devil all right, like it tells you, it tells uh, in in First Peter, not First Peter, uh, Timothy, that you're gonna have guys out there desiring to de be teachers of the law and don't understand what the hell they're talking about. Let me read it in the NLT. Matter of fact, First Timothy one and seven it says they want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they are talking about, even though they speak so confidently. And uh, through these different encounters and, you know, uh, their teachings, they're really coming back in that spirit of, of uh, the, 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 the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees that really didn't believe on Yahushai. It's really showing at this point. You really don't um, count the grace of the sacrifice, you know, that was given by way of the Lord's death. You believe that you can uh, exalt your own righteousness over over faith. You believe that uh, your own righteousness, according to the law, is what's going to get you in the chariot. It's going to get you, you know, in, in in the door, so to speak, and not by actual faith. So um, I'm gonna play some of this, and this is from uh the elder in Baltimore uh. Karatazaba, all right, Bible uh, defenders, all right. So here again, once again, Sakari once again confounded by a Christian Calvinist. It's a damn shame, man. You, that that whole Sakari University thing that I, I, that's why I really believe that's just a, a, a big money racket. You're charging for these breakdowns, but your men are out there getting confounded by Calvinist. And you pride yourself on being these top scholars in all of Israel. 
This is why the scriptures say, he that, that, that shall uh, exalt himself shall be abased. So let's, uh, let, let's, let's watch this and listen. The issue isn't as, as an ethnicity. The issue is who is God. And God is holy. Yeah, but what are you doing to be justified before God? That's my question. I, ans I answered yours the best I can, but you won't answer mine. I'll answer right now. Get Romans chapter 2. You can't be justified before God. We can't be justified before God. Absolutely not. Not by being good. Not not by being good. Not not by being good. Only by faith. We by grace you say to faith. We just read a scripture that says, In the Lord, all of the seed of Israel are going to be justified in glory. Read that. It's a reference to the elect. Chapter 2 and verse 13. Absolutely. And we're going to see what the elect are going to be doing. The church. For not the hearers of the law are justified. You're done. You're done. Let, no, listen to the Bible. Go ahead. But the not, doers of the law. You won't, you won't on, argue. Right? The doers of the law. No, but the doers of the law shall, know, shall be bro, justified. Right. So it said the doers of the law were going to be justified. So do you take yeah, that? But you're not so interpreting it. You you're not that interpreting that. Do you take interpreting. back the statement that you made that we cannot be justified by keeping the law? I absolutely do not take it back. Paul in Romans 2 hasn't even gone to the gospel yet. Go to Romans now. Go to Romans chapter 3 and read verse 31. So you think it's all about faith, right? And that's and that's funny because uh he's telling him to read Romans 3 and 31, which we'll get to that. But why did well, why didn't he tell his man, his reader, to read a verse even before that? Or a couple of verses before that, and then read down just to give context and understanding to it. See, it's, his his epistles are complicated to the unlearned. All right. If you're unlearned, you're going to have trouble with Apostle Paul's uh, writings. And clearly this is exposing that these dudes are coming in that that spirit of the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees who believed that the most is accepting our righteousness based on. The law. So, this is what I'm gonna do. Let's uh, first and foremost, let's go to uh, let's go to the Old Testament real quick. We're gonna go to Psalms 143. This is uh, Psalms 143 and one. This is a Psalm of David. It says, hear my prayer, O Yahweh, give ear to my supplications, in thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. This is what David said, a man to the most high's heart. He said, in your sight shall no man living be justified. So that in itself should tell you our righteousness is as filthy rags as it was prophesied. Isaiah 64 and 6. We can't be justified by the law. We're too filthy. That's what these dudes don't understand. And if you really in your mind, you're truly convinced that your righteousness fulfills the law, then your sacrifices, your prayers, what good are they? Because if it's not going through Yahweh Shai, who is the, the mediator, then who is it going to? Because the Lord ain't accepting nothing else. If it ain't going through his only begotten son, it's not being accepted. Then you filthy. You ain't keeping, you're not justified by the law because you're not keeping all the law. I don't know how many times we got to uh, reestablish that. But apparently over there, they have that complex. They really believe that they're justified. They're in debt to the whole law. And that's what they're going to be judged on. They're going to be in debt to the whole law. And they think because we actually are, 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 uh, Backing with the, uh, what Apostle Paul said in his teachings and what it says in the gospel, they think that we're siding with the Christians. No, man, because the Christians, they don't they believe you can do what the hell you want to do. We're not teaching that. We, we still are to um, 
observe the law to the best of our ability. And that's why we have grace, because we know that we're going to be falling, you know, from 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 the glory. But we have Yahweh shy. All right. We don't use this uh, the liberty that we have under this grace as an occasion to the flesh. It's still to glorify the Lord in our bodies, even if we fall short. And we acknowledge him and we re repent. And we continue to move forward. But you being just in your own mind, you, you, you think that you justified. You better reconsider what these scriptures are saying. Scriptures say there is none that do of good. Let me let me find that one. That's why you got to hope that you're of the elect because they're the only ones who the Lord impute of no sin to. If you ain't part of that that number, if you ain't part of that group of men, hey, you're not going to get that same pass, man. <clears throat> let me see if I could find that verse. Oops. And this is what Sakari this is what Sakari is um producing. You know, children that are twofold more um twofold the child children of hell than themselves, man. That's what they're producing with their doctrine over there. Uh Psalms uh, 14 and 1 it says, The fool have said in his heart, There is no God, they are cor they are corrupt, they have done abominable works, there is none that doeth good all right let me see if i can find another one there's another one similar to that Hold on, let me go here. Psalms 130 and verse uh, 3. It says, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? And let me get some uh, cross reference precepts to that. There's plenty of them. <clears throat> Job 9 and 2. I know it is of so of a truth, but how should a man be just with the Most High? If he will contend with them, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. There's no way you can do it. You cannot justify yourself before the Lord. That's why we're, we're, we're going to be just by our faith, as it says also in the prophet. All right? The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 and uh, uh, 4. Job 9 and 20, if I justify myself, and this is Job, my own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. And those dudes, there that's what they're showing, that they're perverse. Them scribes, and them hypocritical scribes and Pharisees and chief priests, they were perverse. Because they were saying, but not doing. But then they'll have the nerve to quote, like what they just did. They that are doer of the law shall be justified. Yeah, but do you understand what he was actually saying there? That means that you got to do the whole law to be justified. If you ain't doing it to the T, all 613 perfectly, then you ain't justified. It's that simple. Or else you're proving yourself to be perverse. All right. Yahweh Shai was the only one that came to do that. And that's why we are under his sacrifice. Job 10 and 14, if I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from mine iniquity. And especially if you hold yourself to the old uh, the old covenant, the first covenant. Under the, the mouth of uh, two or three witnesses, you know, let every, let every word be established. Under the law of Moses, you 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 got no mercy. Job 15 and uh, 14. What is man that he should be clean? And he which is born of a woman that he should be righteous. So 
I could just keep going, but, and this is all in the Old Testament. So, this is the attitude that you want to, you know, take into perspective. All right, somebody that's humble, that know that they're in need of salvation, they, they're in need of mercy. All right, they know that they're not perfect. This is Luke uh, 18. And let me go to, yep, verse 9. It says, and he spake, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking, of course. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous, like these scribes and Pharisees, like the Sakari, like the IUIC, all these dudes that's pushing the law down your throat, right? And they was trying to uh, push the law heavy down the um, the throat of uh, the Israelite foreigners, the the ones that were just coming out of that that Greco-Roman influence. They was just coming into the faith. And they was pushing the law down their throat, saying that this is the only way you're going to receive salvation. Get circumcised right now. You know? And it was all hypocrisy. It says, and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as the other men are extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this publican i fast twice in the week i give tithes of all that i possess and a publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven and why because this man is he, he he's humble right but smote upon his breast saying god be merciful to me a sinner i tell you this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted and right now we seeing that even though these dudes are uh exalted you know really going back to their leadership they're super exalted they're very heady and high-minded super puffed up but you're seeing that the lord through the spirit is abasing them and using christians to do it and this is embarrassing, man. Once again, you dudes might want to humble down for, for, really, you just need to humble down from here on out because you're looking bad. And then we got to come behind it and, and clean it up. But you, you, you'll spin a narrative and say, oh, GMS, they, they, they teaching Christianity now. You're just proving that you're coming back in y'all lots, man. Falsely accusing a uh, uh, lying and saying that Apostle Paul uh, got checked because he was uh, teaching a different doctrine when the uh, the other apostles, the the, the heads, they didn't um, rebuke Paul for, for going off in, in the teachings. That was that was a lie. So anyway, let's listen to a little more and we'll we'll come right back. It doesn't matter what I think. You think it's all about faith. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what the scripture says. For by grace you say through faith. That not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy is saved. You don't have it. You can only be saved by mercy. You don't keep. And he says, it is as it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Question, is loving your neighbor something that proceeds out of the mouth of God? Yes. Is that found in the Ten Commandments? Yes. No. Jesus, Jesus said all the commandments, the commandments are name, encapsulated sir? in these Sir, what's your name? Mark. Mark. The Ten Commandments are found in Exodus, the 20th chapter. Loving thy neighbor is not found in Exodus, the 20th chapter. So demonstrate how the Ten Commandments includes loving your neighbor. This guy here. They all, got that, they all got that puffed up look, but they'll end up saying something very erroneous in the moment and wound up getting confounded. This is why the Lord, this is why the scriptures say he he give of uh he resists of the proud and give of grace unto the humble, man. This ain't a good look. This is the second time. And, and the other one, the other uh uh incident, that shit went viral. So now the Christians they, they got something. 
Now you you giving it to him. First table of the commandments, one through four. Okay. Loving your neighbor is the second table of the commandments, okay. right. which so, is six through okay. ten. Okay. And that's the that's, that's the historic that's, belief. That's, that's not correct. Uh, cool. What about that Matthew would, 22, Mark, 37 Mark, through 39? Mark, 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 that would include every command is the first table of the commandments, one through four. Okay. Loving your neighbor is the second table of the commandments, okay. right. which so, is six okay. through ten. Okay. And that's the that's, that's the historic that's, that's, belief. That's, that's not correct. Go to, uh, what about Matthew 22, 37 Mark, 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 Mark. It's the first table of the commandments, 1 through 4. Okay. Loving your neighbor is the second table of the commandments, okay. which is 6 okay. through 10. And that's the, that's that's, the historic that's, belief. That's, that's not correct. Go. Yeah, these dudes, man. <laughs> well, you, you, and, and we're going to see, because you know they're going to do damage control. They're going to do a three, four hour live more than likely and try to clean everything up. But your men are out there looking bad. All right. Now I want to go back to the point because they was getting ready to quote Romans three and 31, right? <clears throat> you go to Romans three and 31, which we know what it says. All right. Do we, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah. We established the law. Meaning the law is here to stay. It's, 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 it's never going to go away. All right, Yahweh Shai fulfilled his uh, his portion of the, uh, of the law. He kept the law perfectly, and he also fulfilled what was written in the, the law, the, um, the Psalms, and in the prophets. And also, the law is going to be written into us, so we're going to be keeping the law. But right now, we're under grace. So right now, we're justified by faith. In the belief of, of Yahweh and his sacrifice and his resurrection. Now, when you read up above, all right, Romans 3. Because who, who is the justifier, right? Romans 3 and um, 25, it says, uh, let me see. Uh, let me start at uh, 24. It says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. And that's what we're justified by, his, his grace. Let's go to where uh, it says that in John. Let's go to John 1 and 17. And it says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right. So that's how we, we were given this grace. So now it says, whom the Most High have set forth to be a propitiation, an atonement through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of the Most High. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahweh where is boasting then, right? Because it's not about your own works. If the Lord himself had to justify you, you can't justify yourself. All right, if you're doing the law to the T, then all right, you got your case. Now you can go to the most side and be like, listen, I'm justified. I'm keeping every single law in the, in, in the letter. But outside of that, because <laughs> we know you're not going to do that, then uh, you can't boast. It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. All right. And yes, um, faith without works is dead. Right. But using Abraham, for example. All right. Our, 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 our patriarch, our forefather Abraham. When he uh, was about to sacrifice um, Isaac. But but of course was was stopped. Was that an act of faith? That sure was an act of faith. Now, what law was he keeping when, when the Lord instructed him to do that? We know there's no such law to sacrifice your own child. His faith got tested. That's what that was. And he was obedient. This is why the Lord trusted him and called him his friend. That's the level of faith that the Lord is looking for, especially if you was a, a, a Gentile, an Israelite foreigner coming out of that 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 pagan world. If you had that level of faith, 
to believe on Yahweh Shai and the miracles that he did and his death and resurrection, then that was enough. But these dudes still don't understand. So they're, they're still hard bent on establishing their own righteousness, which is it's, it's not going to end. That's not going to end well. All right. It says, therefore, we conclude that all, all, it's like you, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Like those that, that was just coming in, they were justified and they weren't even circumcised. All right. Timothy, he was justified before he got circumcised. Faith, uh, Abraham was a faithful servant before the Lord made that covenant of sacrifice with them. That's what that, that's where uh, Apostle Paul was getting at, addressing the, the 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 church of all those Israelites that were scattered. We're not going to push the whole law on you so tough. It's a process, and you ha you have to believe, and then you have to grow in the faith. It says, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. And that doesn't go for an Edomite. That doesn't go for these Bible-thumping uh, Christian Edomites. These Catholics and, 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 you know, that's talking about other Israelites. All right, because they both were going to be justified by faith. It says, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. That was how they, you were going to be justified. But they thought they had one. And it was a reason why homie quoted, he only told his reader to quote or read from uh, Romans 3 and 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we established the law. Just because we're going to be justified by faith and not based on the works of the law doesn't mean that the law is done away with. It just means that the standard of righteousness that the Lord is looking for is not based on being a doer of the law. Because you're, you're not a doer of the, uh, of the law. Alright, so let's go from there. Let's go to um, James 2 and uh, 21. Because I mentioned about Abraham, right? James 2 and 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? This is what he meant by your, your works of faith. It had nothing to do with the Mosaic law. All right? See as thou have, suck it, see as thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which say of Abraham believed the Mosai, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of the Mosai. And that's the seed of Abraham. And uh, Galatians, uh, was that three? Where it says that he would uh, justify the, uh, uh, the ungodly or the heathen through faith. That's, that, that's who the, the seed of Abraham is. The Lord's faithful friends, his servants, his, his, his true believers. It says, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So let's go from there to... um. Galatians 5. Yes, Galatians 5 and 1. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Yahweh Shai have made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, because you had them hypocritical, hypocr hypocritical scribes and Pharisees that was, you know, putting burdens on people, and they themselves wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't hold that same burden. They were trying to hide their secret sins. But out in the public, they were just super duper righteous. Fringe hanging, fringes hanging to the ground. <laughs> Behold, I, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Yahweh shall profit you nothing. Yeah. 
is it, his his sacrifice is basically vain. Because that's the, uh, the 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 pretense. Your righteousness is of the law, so therefore, sac circ you know, circumcise yourself. You ain't thinking about Yahweh Shai. Them dudes are proving they don't believe Yahweh Shai. That's why they teach not to worship Yahweh Shai because they don't really believe, and this is why they're having trouble. This is this is why. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Read Deuteronomy the 27th and 28th chapter, man. Yahweh Shai has become of none effect unto you whosoever of you are justified by the law. You are fallen from grace. You've fallen from grace. You, 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 you lose your grace. So, and you got to uh, hold yourself accountable to him that's going to judge. Who's going to sit on that uh, judgment seat. So, let's go from there. Let's go to Galatians 2. And that uh, was a 16. And it says... Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, even when even we have believed in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, that we might be justified by the faith of Mashiach, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, because you're you're in debt to the whole law, and like it, like James said, if you offend in one, you offend in them all. But this by no means mean that. You know, you could just be lawless. All right, you could just get carried away like the Christians do and just do what the hell you want to do. All right, you're still to, to, to observe it. Not that we're going to be saved by it, but do you, you, we're supposed to be keeping the commandments. Don't be committing adultery. All right. Love your neighbor. Uh, don't, don't steal from your neighbor. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet what your neighbor have. And even a dietary law because these, these bodies that we're in is, is the temple of the Lord. So keep observe the dietary law. Don't eat shellfish. Don't eat uh, uh, swine. Or none of that crap. And there's so much more, you know. Definitely uh, uh, don't be a damn mo. And the Christian churches, they they <laughs> they try to man manipulate the uh, the New Testament teachings to tolerate that, to accept that, and there is no tolerance for that, Old or New Testament. It just it is just surely wrong. There's no way to justify that behavior, man. All right, it says, but if. While we seek to be justified by Hamashiach, we ourselves also are found sinners. Meaning you acknowledge that you're not perfect. Is therefore Yahweh Shai the minister of sin? God forbid. No, he doesn't. He's not going to. Uh, uh, when did the Lord ever tempt anybody with evil? He doesn't tempt no man to, uh, to, to do evil. But he just came to, to, to be that saving grace for us. Because he knew that we would go off and we would need him. Or else we would just, you know, we, we would die off. If we hinged everything based on the first uh, covenant and we wasn't redeemed from that, that, that uh, penalty, we'd all be done. So <clears throat> that, that, that's pretty much, matter of fact, let me read this last verse. I'm going to jump down because this, you know, this was a, uh, you know, you could tell the passion in this when when he said it uh verse 21 i do not frustrate the grace of the most high for if righteousness come by the law then yahweh shai is dead in vain there it is so you do the law the law the law you're gonna continue to expose yourself all right you see we're, we're seeing that you dudes really are not of yahweh shai now, Yahweh Shai is indeed uh, a, a, a rock of offense, a stone of stumbling. 
And we seeing dudes, they, they tripping and falling hard. So anyway, Lord willing, this was edifying. Let me give all praise to y'all by Shemiah Shai. And until the next one, Shalom.